Hi everybody, it's Adam from Lucid Pixel. I know it's been a little while since I put out a talk, a video talk like this. I did put out a podcast recently. Um, I've just been busy. It's nothing more complicated than that. But with that said, um, before I actually start my talk, I wanted to mention something. Uh, I wanted to express a personal feeling, uh, and that is with regards to what's currently happening in Belgium, and what just happened, and what's still happening to a certain degree in Belgium. And I want you to know that my heart goes out to all of you, uh, everybody who has been affected by this directly or indirectly. I want you to know that uh, from I'm sending my love all the way from Canada and my healing vibes. I know that you're going to be going through a bit of a rough, a rough patch, but know that everything's going to turn out fine in the end. Um, and even, you know, to my student, uh, Antonio, who lives, uh, who lives very, he was 30 minutes away from where the bombs actually hit in Brussels. Uh, so I want you to know that you, you know, all of you, you have my support and my love. And I want you to know as well, it, it made me think about what was going on and uh, how that relates to what I want to talk with you about today uh, with regards to my art talks. And I was I had a short conversation with Antonio about this, and uh, we got on the topic of why do they do why why people find the need to do this in the first place very often, and it very often it's you know you call it call it what you will, but it's very often related to fear, right? Um, that that certain people want you to feel a certain way, be afraid of certain things, and that also got me thinking about what I've been listening to and researching a lot lately, which is marketing. Okay, I know this might seem like a completely abstract combination of things I'm throwing at you, but but bear, but stay with me. It'll make sense. It'll make sense in a moment. When you think about how you think on a daily basis, how you feel on a daily basis about everyday things, about how you smell, about how you look, about how you draw, about how you know how you dress, about the car you drive, about the neighborhood you live in, about all of these different things, all of it. All of these opinions and feelings that you have about your self-worth, about your competence, so on and so forth, all stem from a thought. And that thought uh, is created by you, but is very often influenced by your surroundings. For instance, look at what happens with a lot of, a lot of young teenagers and adults where they get caught up in eating disorders because they have to stare at pictures of of skinny people all the time, skinny models and people that, you know, with with 4% body fat type of type of nonsense. And that influences your day to day life and how you feel about yourself. And furthermore, what you think you're supposed to feel like, you're supposed to feel this way or that way. And a lot of that very often has to do with the influences around you. A very good example is uh, 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 a podcast I was listening to on marketing. Um, one I've been listening to a lot, one I even mentioned in my podcast. And uh, uh, one of which we're talking about how marketers over the years um, started to use uh, shame and embarrassment and fear as marketing tools, which of course might not come as a huge surprise. But it, 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 if, you, if we go back 50, 100 years into the past, we realize that people thought and felt different things back then. An example of that is think about deodorant, right? We wear deodorant because we don't want to get B.O., because we don't want to smell bad in public. Why? Because smelling bad is is embarrassing. Well, if we go back, I don't know exactly how many years, but if we go back a certain length of time, there was a time where nobody cared about BO. BO wasn't considered a negative thing. Nobody gave much thought to it. If somebody had BO, they have BO, big deal. It wasn't, in fact, it very often played into the whole pheromone thing. People over completely tuned it out. But then marketers at a certain point decided they wanted to make, they realized that they could make a little, lot of money selling deodorant products. So they started to put out pitches and advertisements, putting a stigma on, on body odor, all these different types of things, sweat stains under the arms or whatever. They made these things uh, a taboo so that they could sell you shit. <laughs> That's basically it. That's really what it comes down to. Now, if I put that into the context of fear of what we live in today, okay? Now, I'm, I'm going to distance, of course, I'm distancing myself from, from, from what happened in, in Brussels. I'm talking more strictly about our day-to-day -day lives and stuff like that. But if we think about the fears that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, and I'm not talking about major life-changing, life-altering fears. I'm talking about typical day-to-day -day stuff, stuff that rolls around in our subconscious more very often, um, that affects who we are as artists on a day-to-day -day basis, if, if we add up those little feelings that we accumulate day after day, 
it amounts to a whole lot of negativity, of wasted energy, of discouragement, of frustration. That These little things add up on you. And very often, like a very good example is, if you think about what stresses us out in day-to-day -day life, maybe only a handful of times in our entire life will we experience something life-altering, something huge, something that rocks us at our foundation, that causes us immediate stress. Most stresses that people really suffer from on a, on a long-term basis are the little things, little arguments, little things that get you get you down, little insecurities that you deal with, things you don't deal with, putting things off, all those little day-to-day -day things add up and they accumulate. So those are the things you don't want to take for granted. And that's what I want to address and tackle today as far as, as far as helping you with your career and moving forward with your career. And one of these major things is the fear of sucking, the fear of being bad, the fear of not producing great art, the fear of being ridiculed or looked down upon by other people because your artwork isn't great. And you know who suffers the most with this stuff? It's not the beginners. It's not the novice artists that are just starting off because they know and everybody else knows that they're just starting to learn. So there isn't that added pressure. It's the big ones. It's the real celebrities. It's the real big name head honcho artists out there. The better you get, very often the more pressure you put on yourself to live up to a certain standard because people have seen you live up to a certain standard and then they expect you to do it over and over and over again. And that's putting a lot of pressure on somebody. Not negative pressure if you can handle it well, but it can be if you don't handle it well. And this starts to become a reality in your life. The, these, this feeling, this pressure of always putting your best foot forward and showing off your best stuff kicks in very early in on your career where you really start to realize, as soon as you start to realize, hmm, I can actually get somewhere with with my artwork, is at the same time where you start to feel, oh crap, I better be careful with what I share online, all right? And every now and then, you get this brave soul that will come out and say it like it is. And I remember very recently, uh, Noah, Brad Noah Bradley put out um, uh, uh, an article on Facebook. He posted it online showing the evolution of his art when he completely couldn't draw for the life of him. And that slow, slow evolution year after year as he got better and better and better until he became who he was today. And what it did is it completely demystified the whole who, where, how he got to where he got. It became all of us into to people who haven't experienced this yet in their own career. It completely, it made you realize, holy smokes, this is actually tangible. I can actually get there. It isn't this ma magical leap from being horrible to being epic. It's a very, very intuitive step-by-step -step process. And you can see the transitions in his life, the things that he discovered at certain points in his life that helped give him that little boost that helped him get better at doing this or that. Okay. So the, the big thank you to Noah, to Noah Bradley for sharing that for everybody, because not everybody has the courage to, to do that. People don't want you to see them with their pants down, right? Who wants to see some big celebrity artist paint something that really sucks? Well, that's the thing. What would you feel? What would you think if you saw some really big, well-known artist draw something and go, hmm, that's actually not that great? How would you feel? How would you react? Would you be, oh, this artist isn't who I thought they were. Oh, they're a fraud. Or would you go, huh, cool. They have bad days too. Well, 99% of the population is probably going to go, actually, you know what? Hey, I find that a little bit reassuring to know that some well-known artist can draw crap too. Even with all of the successes and all of the great, the huge amazing portfolio and the beautiful works that they do yeah they actually draw stuff that sucks once in a while in fact if you really were to be completely honest you draw the great artists draw stuff stuff that sucks on a daily basis but they're recording the stuff that works so when you end up seeing on screen is the stuff that actually succeeded but you didn't see the five or six images that didn't a lot of the image a lot of the paintings that i get you know compliments for and people tell me oh i love this painting don't realize it was my fifth attempt and it completely changed. I tried this, tried that, and then I decided to take a completely different direction and try something completely different, and that's when it worked. And that's a very normal part of my day-to-day -day process. When I send my work to clients, I'll send them a couple of different examples. 
And usually the first, second, or third attempt are just me getting the garbage out. It's just me, ugh, ugh yuck, boo, boo, ah, discard it, scrap it. And then I send them the one where I start to feel like I'm starting to get on the right track. And this is where I discovered the huge, huge importance of doing thumbnails and thumbnailing my stuff to get that crap out in disposable form. <laughs> You know, little bite-sized disposable forms of art that I can get rid of and then I can get that helps me get to the results I'm looking for quicker without sacrificing all that time and energy, right? But this is a normal part of life. And one of the things that I had to embrace as an artist in order to get to where I needed to get to succeed was to let go of that fear, was to let go of my ego and just... Focus on the task at hand, focus on the goal, focus on the emotion, focus on the mood, focus on the composition, the visual storytelling, and forget about painting pretty pictures. And it was funny. As soon as I abandoned the need to make things look pretty, all of a sudden my art started to get much better, much quicker. If you don't believe me, here's a good example. Go online and look up Pixar concept art. Look up Disney concept art. Look up big name artists where you can see their where you can see their production process where you see where they actually how they actually think and flesh things out and you're going to realize something very quickly even in the stuff that pixar publishes sometimes these drawings look like they were drawn by a two-year-old they're just the most absolutely basic crap you've ever seen in your life just squiggly bezier curve lasso tool shapes fill texture and it, even in their crappiest form they still do manage to excite you and entertain you and wow you. Okay? How do they do that? It's because they weren't trying to paint pretty pictures. They were trying to they were trying to capture a mood. They were trying to capture a moment, a feeling. They let go of their ego. They let go of their need to paint pretty things. And they focused on on the task at hand, what it was that they wanted their audience to feel. They weren't looking for compliments on their great art. They were trying to tell a story and it went beyond them and when you can go beyond yourself and go beyond your ego and stop trying to paint pretty stuff and start focusing on what people what your audience is actually looking for you start to get you, your work starts to improve your stress level starts to go down you start putting all the pressure of the world on you to only show you put your best foot forward and you become willing to make an ass of yourself in public here's another example my sister my younger sister, well, not that much. She was much younger when I was <laughs> when I was eight. Now she's only a couple of years younger than me, but she's a singer, and among many other things. But she's a, she's a fabulous singer, and I remember when I first started watching her perform. At, she used to work at this bar in NDG where I used to where, where we used to live, and uh, she she would perform there all the time. Her first live gigs type of thing. And I remember when she she's a tall girl, tall slim girl, and she, whenever she would do her performance. She had the microphone stand and I always, everybody used to make fun of her. She would sit there and sing. She had a great voice, but she would sit, she'd stand and hide behind <laughs> her microphone stand and she would sing. And the only thing that would move, she would look up at the TV because it was a bar, right? So she'd look up at the TV and she would sing. And the only thing that would move was her finger that was tapping to the sound of the music. So you could hear her voice and you could see her finger move. That was it. And then at a certain point, somebody got fed up with her and just grabbed the mic stand and yanked it out. So all she had was the all she had was the microphone and the cord. And all of a sudden, she had to let her weight go. She wasn't supporting herself on this. She wasn't hiding herself behind this obstacle. And all of a sudden, her posture started to change and she started to relax. Now, fast forward five years later, and she's still performing. And what was the difference? What made her more professional? What made her more entertaining? What made her more relaxed? What made her more engaging on stage five years later? It was the fact that she stopped caring what people thought of her on stage. She wasn't focused on her physical appearance. She was focusing on her performance, on the song, on the lyrics, on the message. And she, she could fall flat on her ass and get right back up again. I don't know if you've ever seen this, but there's a video by Lady showing... Um, uh, a, a, a fumble by Lady Gaga, somebody who I have a huge amount of respect for as a performer and as a person, okay? And in one of these particular clips, she was standing on top of a piano and she steps down off the piano bench and the piano bench gives out and she falls in, in the middle of a song while she's singing in front of millions of people and falls on, on her ass, you know, ass in the air, 
under the under the thing. And what happened? She didn't. If you watch this video, she didn't miss a beat. She just kept singing. She got back up and she kept singing and there was zero embarrassment on her face. There was no humiliation. There was no embarrassment. Her hair was a little fucked up. She got up and she was good to go. Why? How could she do that? How could she screw up in front of millions of people and not cry and run off stage? Why? Because it wasn't about her. It wasn't about her appearance. It was about her song. And her, her body might have wigged out, but her voice didn't. So the song went on and nobody even thought anything of it. Oh, she fell. She got back up. The same thing applies to your art. Get rid of your fear of looking bad. Get rid of your fear of people judging you. Because by doing that, by focusing on your fear and your fear alone, you're only focusing on the superficial layer of who you are, the physical superficial layer of your being as a human being, or the physical superficial layer of your art, painting a cool night, Ding! right? With the perfect armor and the perfect pose, with the perfect background, perfect values and textures. Forget that. Instead, paint a knight who has character, who has soul, who has thought, who has something deep happening inside of him. Put him in a certain scenario. Focus on the visual storytelling. How do I get people to get that story? How do I make that story readable? How do I make his expression engaging and make you actually feel what he's feeling? How do I use the light to help enhance all of this stuff? And forget about painting a pretty a pretty knight, a pretty foot soldier, a guy on a la a guy on a on horseback with a lance. It doesn't matter. What matters is the message that you're sharing with your audience. And when your message resonates through, they will look past and forgive the lack of perfect penmanship, the lack of perfect hand control, and they'll be able to be authentically entertained by your art. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what people are really looking for. Okay, People are really looking for you in your art, in your message, your emotion. As an actor or a singer has to learn to let themselves go and forget about their physical appearance so that people can actually admire them for what they truly are deep down inside, an artist needs to do the same thing with their artwork. And let go of your need for people to go, wow, you're really pretty. And people go, instead, wow, that was absolutely mind-bendingly awesome as of an experience and they realize that there's a human behind that so <laughs> hopefully you enjoyed my, my latest talk again i apologize for taking so long and uh last but not least um lucid pixel my online mentorship i have spots opening up right now over the next few weeks i'm going to be i'm going to be uh taking uh, registrations for the mentorship to start within the next few weeks. So uh, remember, it's a first come, first serve thing. So if you want to start soon, uh, then I suggest you get in touch with me right away. Of course, and all the uh, information is going to be in the description below. So go, go ahead and uh, check that out for yourself. So hopefully you enjoyed my talk and don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care.